ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு பார்ட் டுவெல் திஸ் இஸ் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் ஸ்பெஷலிஸ்ட் பார்ட் ஸோ லெட்ஸ் டோ நாட் வேஸ்ட் மச் டைம் லெட்ஸ் மோ டு கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் விச் ஆஃப் த ஃபாலோவிங் இஸ் த ப்ரைமரி கோல் ஆஃப் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் ஃபிசியோதெரபி ஆப்ஷன் ஏ இன்ஜுரி ப்ரிவென்ஷன் ஆப்ஷன் பி பெர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் என்ஹான்ஸ்மெண்ட் ஆப்ஷன் சி ரீஹாபிலிட்டேஷன் ஆப்ஷன் டி ஆல் ஆஃப் த அபவ் அண்ட் ஆன்சர் இஸ் ஆப்ஷன் டி ஆல் ஆஃப் த அபவ் நவ் லெட்ஸ் மோ டு கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் டூ டுவெண்ட்டி டூ த ரைஸ் Rest Ice Compression Elevation Protocol is most efficient for which type of injury? Option A, Acute Injury Option B, Chronic Injury Option C, Overuse Injury Option D, All of the Above And the answer is Option A, Acute Injury Now let's move to question number 223 Which of the following is not a common mechanism of injury in sports? Option A, Overtraining Option B, Sudden Deceleration Option C, Direct Impact Option D, Over Sleep Quality And the answer is Option D, Over Sleep Quality Now let's move to question number 224 The eccentric phase of muscle contraction is responsible for Option A, Muscle Lengthening Option B, Muscle Shortening Option C, Stabilization Option D, All of the Above And the answer is Option A, Muscle Lengthening Now let's move to question number 225 Which of the following is the most important factor in determining return to play timeline for an athlete? Option A, severity of the injury. Option B, athlete's age and fitness level. Option C, type of sport and position. Option D, all of the above. And the answer is Option D, all of the above. Now let's move to question number 226. The functional movement screen is reliable tool for Option A identifying the movement dysfunction option B assessing sports specific skill performance option C determining an athlete's training readiness option D all of the above and the answer is option D all of the above now let's move to question number 227 cryotherapy should be avoided with patients exhibiting option A myofascial pain syndrome option D severity of spasticity Option C, Degenerative Joint Disease Option D, Vasospasm And answer is Option D, Vasospasm Now let's move to question number 228 Which of the following is primary goal for price, protection, rest, ice, compression, elevation protocol in management of the acute sports injury? Option A, Promote Tissue Healing Option B, Reduce Muscle Spasm Option C improve joint range of motion option D enhance athletic performance and the answer is option A promote tissue healing now let's move to question number 229 the open kinetic chain exercise is most appropriate for option A strengthening proximal muscle groups option B improving proprioception option C rehabilitating lower extremity injuries option D all of the above and the answer is Option B improving proprioception Now let's move to question number 230 Which of the following is the most common type of sports injury Option A sprain Option B strain Option C contusions Option D fractures and the answer is Option A sprain Now let's move to question number 231 Which of the following is the primary function of sports taping or bracing in injury management Option A provide pain relief option B improve joint stability option C enhance athletic performance option D all of the above and the answer is option B improve joint stability Now let's move to question number 232 which of the following is the most effective treatment for grade 2 ankle sprain option A rise protocol option B immediate surgical intervention Option C immobilization in a cast option D functional rehabilitation with early weight bearing and the answer is option D functional rehabilitation with early weight bearing now let's move to question number 233 the binton score is used to assess option A ligamentous laxity option B muscle flexibility option C joint range of motion option D all of the above and the answer is Option A ligamentous laxity Now let's move to question number 234 Which of the following is the most important factor in determining the success of sports injuries rehabilitation plan 
option a adherence to the prescribed exercise option b frequency of physiotherapy sessions option c use of advanced technological mobility option d all of the above and the answer is option a adherence to the prescribed exercise now let's move to question number 235 which of the following is the primary role of sports physiotherapist during a competition? Option A, providing on-field emergency care. Option B, developing pre-participation screening protocols. Option C, designing individualized rehabilitation programs. Option D, all of the above. And the answer is... Option A, providing on-field emergency care. Now let's move to question number 236. Which of the following is the primary objective of a firm rolling or a myofascial release technique in sports rehabilitation? Option A. Reducing muscle soreness. Option B. Improving joint range of motion. Option C. Increasing muscle strength. Option E. Enhancing the neuromuscular coordination. And the answer is... Option B. Improving joint range of motion. Now let's move to question number 237. Which of the following is the primary mechanism responsible for the development of medial tibial stress syndrome or shin splints in runners? Option A. Excessive pronation. Option B. Muscle imbalance. Option C. Overtraining. Option D. Overrunning technique. And the answer is... Option A. Excessive pronation. Now let's move to question number 238. The close kinetic chain exercise is most appropriate for... Option A. Improving balance and proprioception. Option B. Isolating and strengthening specific muscle groups. Option C. Enhancing functional movement patterns. Option D. All of the above. And the answer is... Option D. All of the above. Now let's move to question number 239. Which of the following is the most important consideration when designing a sports-specific rehabilitation program for an athlete? Option A. Restoring full range of motion. Option B, achieving pre-injury strength levels. Option C, replicating the demands of the sport. Option D, minimizing the risk of re-injury. And the answer is... Option C, replicating the demands of the sport. Now let's move to question number 240. Which of the following is the most common mechanism of injury in overhead sports such as baseball and tennis? Option A, sudden deceleration. Option B. Repetitive microdrama. Option C. Direct impact. Option D. Ligamentous laxity. And the answer is... Option B. Repetitive microdrama. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment box. I'll be back with part 13 soon. See you till then. Bye bye. Thank you.